Hello YouTube, Fable Grimro back again giving you guys another uh, Vanguard deck profile. Um, I'm giving you guys uh, an update now on a deck. Uh, I started I started making a little while ago when I posted it before um, and a lot of people wanted me to uh, r really like kind of what I was doing with the deck and it was um, something that I was starting starting at the time and wanted to uh, pick up stuff because I know for like for the for some of the future stuff that was coming out um, This clan was getting pretty pretty good, uh, and I'm talking about Grand Blues, um, and they've been kind of like In obscurity in the Vanguard world because like the one guy that uses them like never shows up in the show So of course they don't get any support uh, Kind of like not, not quite as bad as like new Thomas or whatever, but um, the whole like milling from the deck and calling from the drop zone um, seems like a very abusable mechanic, especially as we get further along into uh, the show. Um, so season three, we finally got uh, some more great Grand Blue support um, with uh, a few cards I'll show you in here, with the break ride, uh, some of the other stuff. And then um, even after this, they've announced that we're getting uh, some other great support cards, like we get a, a brand new boss monster, I'll explain this later, um, with the Fighters Collection, uh, the Grand Blue Legion, the Legion, the whole Legion mechanic just screams Grand Blue to me, so I was like waiting for this Grand Blue Legion to come out, and it, it's gonna get revealed at some point. So, but let me give you guys what I have right now for my, uh, set 13 Grand Blues. Uh, your starter is Peter the Ghosty who replaces Captain Night Kid and the Grade 3 Searcher as sort of your options. This guy is just infinitely better than both of them. Um, full Runner, of course, and then you can Counter Blast 1 and put him into the Soul. Uh, send the top two cards from your deck to the graveyard and draw a card. So, he fulfills the purpose of sort of breaking even, uh, filling up your Soul, because you will use your Soul a bit in this deck, and then uh, letting you get just like a free mill too. So, uh, just a free Ruin Shade out of grade zero, so he's probably the best starter that Grand Blue have uh, out right now. And then we have 12 crits, uh, four of them being uh, Rough Seas Banshee, who is the uh, Psychic Bird clone, put, in, put it into his soul and then uh, draw the card. Uh, you're not a crit. Yep, 12 crits. The math, I can't do. So, yeah. Uh, you want to maximize crits in this deck. Um, stands, people try to use that stuff with, like, uh, Thanatos and whatever. Um, isn't all that great. Um, and draw cards, uh, with the amount of milling, and just the other ways you gain advantage, like, from Superior Conquer to the field, you don't really need draw cards in a deck, because it just kind of, like, mills you out faster. Kind of the same thinking with, like, Gold Paladins usually are like the old gold paladins. So you want to maximize crits to maximize like the offensive pressure you get in this deck. Um, and then the great thing about Roxy's Banshee is you can put her into a solo draw a card. Uh, you can guard with her, or if you mill her, you can revive her back with one of your Grand Blue skills and then use this ability. It's really great. So 12 crits for the maximum pressure possible. You want to be as pressure and offensive as you can to kill your opponent. And then, four heals. Because almost every deck runs four heals. Uh, grade ones. Your four Gustians, your perfect guards. Um, everyone right now, uh, four perfect guards to stand for every deck. Uh, whenever Grand Blue get their uh, quintet wall, which is, you know, the, it's like, it's a, it's a sentinel like the uh, perfect guards, but you get the counter blast one to guard with the top five cards from your deck. Um, and again, with like the whole strategy behind Grand Blue and Legion, that just sounds amazing for like a free like mill five. But uh, for now, four perfect guards are necessary for any deck, whatever. Four of the new hotness. Sea Strolling Banshee. She is the clan's uh, Dindrain clone. Dindrain is uh, one of the gold paladin uh, units, 6,000, that when it's a pure call from the deck, you soul blast one draw a card. Sea Strolling Banshee 
uh, when she is superior called from the damage zone, you Soul Blast want to draw a card. Um, this combined with the Break Ride skill, Kikaitis, uh, nets you some crazy advantage. Even though she's only 6k, um, you have sort of ways around that by either just calling her to the field, retiring her for, for another person's skill to call back out something. Um, if you're summoning her off of uh, Night Mist's uh, the Break Ride's ability, she's an 11k booster, which is really nice in front of a 10k attacker. Um, and just allows you to gain stupid good advantage. She's sort of your main engine of the deck. I see people try to run like two or three of them, and I don't understand because unlike Din Drain, I don't mind drawing into her because I can just guard and send her to the drop zone or just summon her to the field and retire her with a Samurai Speed or something like that. Uh, gets her into the drop zone. Uh, but you want to max on this card because she is your bread and butter of the deck. Uh, and then three 8Ks for good boosting numbers and three Samurai Spirits, who's like your recurring uh, recurring booster, counter blast one to, and then retire a great blow, a grand blue unit to spirit call from the drop zone. So as I said, you can you know retire a sea shoaling banshee that's just kind of float around on the field and call this guy out if you're stuck with like a ruined jade or something like that. As for your grade twos, here's your ruined shades. Um, quite possibly like the workhorse, the the, the work the, the workhorse card of the deck. Uh, since it got released in set 2, as this was, you know, probably the best card they had, uh, it's the 11k attacker where you mill 2, and it gets plus 2,000 when it attacks. Um, one of your main strategies, or one of your main ways of, uh, milling out. Also, four of the, uh, 10k attackers, um, he just hits for really good numbers, um, with, you know, him behind a, a dandy guy's 18 hit cross rides, him, uh, especially paired with Banshee, hits your match number of 16, to, uh, so your, your opponent has to use a 10k shield. Um, if you have him behind Banshee, uh, and you use, you know, the one of them has the plus 5,000 off of um, Night Mist Break Ride, that's uh, a 21 column right there. So, again, he just hits for very good numbers. Uh, and 10k on defensive is also great as well. And then uh, three of the new um, zombie dragon, the uh, corrupt dragon, um, he's sort of like a pseudo 12k attacker. It's not like where if you have a certain vanguard or a certain number of rear guards, it's when he's called from the drop zone. Uh, when he's superior called from the drop zone for the turn, he gets plus 3,000, so he's a 12k attacker for one turn. Um, so he's pretty nice to call off of uh, your Kakaitis, uh, your Break Ride, just because he gets, you know, 17 by himself with the, uh, with the boost, or, uh, 15 with the Kakaitis as a boot, uh, boost. Um, so, uh, and he's 9k otherwise, so he's not terrible, um, but just a very nice, uh, thing to grab out of the drop zone. So for your grade 3, um, this guy... Uh, Lord of the Seven Seas Night Mist, quite possibly, for such for such an under-supported clan that Grand Blue is, they gave them one of the best break rides. Um, so let, let me see what he does. He has the Lord skill. Uh, during your turn, the number of Grand Blue rear guards is four or more. He gets plus 2,000. And then uh, when Grand Blue rides this unit, choose your Vanguard. He gets the plus 10,000. And then you can choose up to, two, up to two Grand Blue units from your drop zone. Call them to rear guard. Those units get plus five thousand until the end of the turn, and then they get retired at the end of the turn. Um, so he is good for all kinds of stupid advantage, especially when uh, you know the, whatever cards you're going to get, they're going to be huge boost. So for the break rights, you're going to be swinging for huge numbers. Um, and as I said, if you get the break ride, uh, you have a ten k. Uh, you have some 10k attackers here, uh, and then you just go break ride, call out two banshees, and you get both their skills to so soul blast one, draw the card. Um, you get the plus two off this, the plus two off the draw. Uh, you have 21k columns right here, plus your vanguard break, break ride column, which is going to be at least 21. Um, 
and then if you so choose to, the Banshees can go back to your drop zone, uh, which is especially useful if you rake right on top of a break ride, so you can just do it again next turn. Or uh, if you want to, instead of swinging for the 21, you can use like a Samurai Spirit to retire the Banshee, call out the Spirit, and then you just get free cards to stay on the field. Uh, so a lot of things you can do with Night Mist. Um, uh, he's probably one of the, the he's like the new uh, main guy of the deck. He's sort of the main focus of the deck because you want to, re the deck is very break ride reliant. So you really, really want to focus on uh, making sure that you are able to Night Mist as much as possible. Uh, so you immediately don't want to go into this guy. Um, uh, Ice Prison Hades, Emperor Kikadis Reverse, uh, who's sort of like the main boss card. He's a little bit underwhelming, uh, especially compared to some of the other reverses. Um, and he sort of gets replaced with the Fighter's Collection card I, I mentioned earlier, uh, Night Snow. But as of right now, he's probably the best thing that Grand Blue have, and he's not bad at all on his own. Um, just, he's very nice when you break right over top of a Night Mist. Um, but if at all possible, you don't really want to uh, go into him uh, without a Night Mist. You, you want to break right over the Night Mist. That's, that's sort of your main goal of the thing. But him, he's not bad. First off, he is a Kakaitis Cross Ride, so he gets the plus 2,000 if you have normal Kakaitis in the soul. But I don't really run uh, the normal Kakaitis because uh, the Break Ride is a lot better as far as the, what the advantage goes when it's paired with. And then if you just want to go, and then I don't go pure cross ride, uh, or even all that like superior ride stuff because it's so inconsistent. I, mean, I don't want to use my break ride turn to cross to break ride over a regular Kakaitis, uh 10k Vanguard, and then be stuck with that for a turn, and then go do this. It's 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 way too slow for uh, what Grand Blur is supposed to do. Uh, but his limit break is you lock one of your rear guards, so you get to lock one of those uh, Banshees or something that you summon back. And then uh, mill the top three cards of your deck, so he has a self-milling effect as well. And then choose one of your Grand Blues in the drop zone, call it to the field permanently, and it gets plus 3,000 for the turn. Um, so definitely not bad as far as the skill goes. He sort of reminds me a bit of uh, the Luki Air Reverse, uh, where it doesn't get as much of a boost, but it's you know it doesn't need a counter blast. It has a self-mill, so you sort of get what you want in your graveyard. And, um, you know... 11k, it's it's just it's a very good card. So this is a very fun deck, um, very underrated deck because this deck like can do things. It's definitely up. It definitely can compete with some of the bigger decks as far as um, the power plays, uh, gaining advantage, what you can do. And Grand Blue as a clan, um, keep just seeing better and better stuff, even though the, it's it's few and far between so once we get the fighters collection once the season four support comes out um i feel that this is going to be a clan to watch for uh and a lot of other people are seeing this too if you've seen some of the prices on some of these cards um night mist thankfully isn't that expensive kakaius is actually pretty cheap because of the new stuff that does come out so he sort of gets cut uh but night mist uh probably will run you know, like five bucks at max of that which isn't that bad uh the Perfect Guards and the Ruin Shades uh, are still holding very pretty high value because like a lot of Perfect Guards drop because stuff got reprinted or uh, clans got new Perfect Guards like you know Kakuro have like three now and Nova's have like four or five that are, com that are coming out um, but Grand Blue uh, they never got a Perfect Guard reprint or a new Perfect Guard coming out it's just Gush Shade, Gush Shade or a Gus Jin, sorry, from set two. Old set that, you know, you can't really find that much anymore. So, this guy is actually going to run you about um, 15 maybe even up to $20. I've seen some stuff up there going pretty high for these guys. Uh, which is, like, what Perfect Guards used to be before they got reprints and stuff like that. Um, so, if you can try to pick these guys up for cheap, like around, like, 10 bucks. Uh, pick up at least two or so because with this guy and then whenever we get the quintet wall, um, gonna be very nice. And the ruin shades will run you another good like 
12 to 15, again, if you can pick them up at, like, 10s, that's great. Unless un unless she actually does get reprinted, because nothing has come out that replaces her as far as what she does for the deck. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys liked this video. Uh, I'll check back again. Uh, hopefully, once we get some news for Grand Blue, I'm definitely going to try to keep this deck up to date. Uh, fun deck. Let me know what you guys think. Peace out, YouTube.